Hey everyone, this is Kathy. And Brian. And welcome to another episode of the Main Street Moments podcast. We have a lot to talk about, a lot going on, as you know, in the world of Disney with Disney news. Uh, I think it's safe to say they're not having a good quarter as far as PR goes. With uh, the the arrest they had of the the sting operation a few weeks ago with the four Disney employees that were in this pedophile thing. Oh my and, goodness! And then this uh, leak of this Zoom meeting the other day. Um, they're getting a lot of bad publicity. And I want to say real quick, we did do some polls on our YouTube channel on Main Street Moments. If you want to go there and take a poll related to this issue, and um, most people are feeling that um, Disney's getting a little too woke too political. And um, I asked if people are going to boycott Disney after this Zoom meeting leaked. And quite a few, I was surprised, said that they actually would. So that'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Um, We wanted to play this clip of Governor Ron DeSantis, our governor, and his reaction to Disney getting political and how he views the situation. And it's pertinent to what we're going to talk about. For Disney to come out and put a statement and say that the bill should have never passed and that they are going to actively work to repeal it, I think, one, was fundamentally dishonest, but two, I think that crossed the line. This state is governed by the interests of the people of the state of Florida. It is not based on the demands of California corporate executives. They do not run this state. They do not control this state. Okay, now that's that's Governor DeSantis of Florida. Now this, this has to do with the the Parental Rights yeah. Act that just passed this week. Now, what's going on this week is absolutely insane and amazing, and it's something that those of us who go to Disney World are going to benefit from in the end. And we'll, as we go on, we'll talk about this. But what it what's happened is is because of this bill in Florida, Disney's corporate has said that they're going to actively work Mm -hmm. to do regime change in the leadership of the government of the state of Florida, which means the governor of Florida and members of the legislature that they don't like. And Disney is a guest in Florida. They're the number one employer in the state of Florida. What I mean by number one, Disney is the largest single employer in Florida. And it's also, of course, the number one tourist destination in the world is Mm -hmm. in Florida. But they are a guest here in Florida, and Disney is run, of course, by the executives in another state. And when you're a guest somewhere and you have incredible benefits Mm -hmm. from that state as a guest, and then you threaten to work actively to run the people that run the state, get them out of office, that's going to tick people off, and they're going to react. And the Florida legislature has had two meetings this week, two, and they're not done. And we have a Republican legislature yeah. and a Republican governor in Florida. Yeah, they have had two, the the legislature. This is a legislative issue in Florida. The state legislature of Florida has had two meetings this week discussing revoking Disney's Reedy Creek status. And for those that don't know, I, I I know a lot of you do know this, but many do not. Disney has its own city. It's called Reedy Creek. It's their own municipality. And if you ever Notice the fire department on Disney property, it's uh, RCFD, Reedy Creek Fire Department. They have their own city, and because they have their own city, they have their own zoning laws. So, In fact, when the monorail breaks down, it's the Reedy Creek Fire Department that rescues the people. Yeah, they have their own city, their own government, and city council and everything. And when they need a permit to build Tron or Guardians of the Galaxy or Galaxy's Edge or... When they built the new lands, like Epcot, you know, was a new park. Right. They, since they're their own municipality, they give themselves the the building permits. And that's why Walt Disney set it up in 1967, because when he built Disneyland. Yeah. One thing he didn't like, all the businesses that were popping up around him that he had no control over. So that was one reason he did it. And it was also to bypass all the zoning laws in, in Florida. I'm sure it's this way in other states. You can, just to build a fence on your property takes two or three months because you got to get permits. Yeah, and we're, getting, we're getting a fence added to our house. Yeah, and it's going to take like two or three 90 months. Days. And, yeah. and now 
So what imagine having a, building a, a ride at Disney. So what will happen is, and there's, and I'm sure there are also some tax benefits that they have to this as well, having their own city. Oh yeah. But it's 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 very nice when you're going to build something new, even it could be a little small thing. They could be putting a an an awning up uh, over over uh, the walkway of a of of a ride queue. They they give themselves the permit to do it. So also it says. Uh, the creation of this district uh, means that Walt Disney World and other landowners pay for local – oh, oh if, it says here – okay, in 67 – I'm reading this from an article. This act allowed Disney to create the Reedy Creek Improvement District. That's right. That's the self-described the purpose being to support and administer certain aspects of the economic development and tourism mm -hmm. within district boundaries. The creation of the district means – Walt Disney World and other landowners pay for local essential services like water, electricity, fire protection, and emergency medical services instead of taxpayers. So yeah. there's a lot of so, benefits. So so what will happen is if they take away the Reedy Creek status, mm -hmm. they'll go back. They'll go under the control of the county, Orange County. Well, well, no, Disney World is in two counties. It is in both Orange County and Osceola well, County. That can be very messy. And yeah, and when you're in two counties, that's going to different counties have different ordinances and restrictions on rules and signage and everything. Oh, else. it would be a and logistical nightmare. For, for them. example, Orange County may have a regulation against um, neon signs. And that might be the sign that they, they have, <laughs> you know, in the new mm -hmm. French area, uh, the Ratatouille Adventure. That might be a sign that does not fit under the county's mm -hmm. signage, zoning. It, it would be a nightmare for Disney. And it's really amazing mm -hmm. that they think they're going to push around the state of Florida. The state of Florida has <laughs> so, – they can't move Disney World. It's, it's, they can't right. move it. It's, no. it's here. Yeah. So Disney World is going to have to bend to um, the Florida legislature if they want to keep this benefit they have. Well, I don't know why they're taking on this big fight with the Flor the state of Florida. Um, because they're the number one employer, the largest. They, they're arrogant. No, they but they got a said, lot of juice in Florida. They said a couple of weeks ago they weren't going to get political. And now I guess they've decided yeah. they're doing 180, did a 180, and now they're decided that they're well, going to get very <clears> political <throat> Yeah. And I think isn't aren't there some laws against companies um you know influencing elections just to benefit their company? I don't know, but I do I know mean, this. I mean that seems to be a little I, conflict of interest I there. do know this, okay. Things between Disney and Florida are going to get really messy and mm -hmm. and Florida is going to win because they're the government. You can't beat City Hall, right? So you can't fight City Hall. That's right. Plus having their own municipality um gives it's basically like a company doing everything in house. And it gives them a lot more freedom as far as hiring and, mm -hmm. and, and other things where they don't have, they have autonomy and they don't have to go to the, the local county government. Now there's two gov counties or even the state. Gov it's kind of like how the Vatican is run. The Vatican is its own little city inside Rome and it's like its own little government or, you know what I mean? So they have, they don't have to follow those certain laws or zoning or anything like that when it comes to the outside area. And it gives them a lot of freedom. I think this is going to happen. We have a Republican state across the board, and uh, they're, they're, they're not having a good relationship right now because of this well, issue. And yeah. this leaked Zoom call um, has really created problems for Disney and for um, – uh, and people in the in on the right, the, yeah. like DeSantis, that are very pissed about it. And well, this is going to benefit it's, us. How so? And I'll tell you how because yeah. it, it's going to get nasty. It is. And Disney is going to lose because they're going up against the governor of Florida in the state legislature, yeah. and they desperately need this Reedy Creek status. It'll be a mess. So what's going to end up happening? They're, they're hitting them where it counts. Disney is sure. going to get a lot of negative publicity, and then they're going to be on some. This will be down the road. They're going to be on some eventually on a PR move to regain the likability from we'll people see. who are ticked off with all this negative attention, and that will benefit us as park owners. Well, tell us what you think about it. Do you, how do you feel about this whole situation with um, not so much the Parental Rights Act, even though that's kind of the catalyst that's been affecting this. But the leaked Zoom meeting, if you haven't seen it, just Google it. It's all over the news. And how do you feel about Disney possibly losing its Reedy Creek status? Do you think that's a fitting punishment or do you think that's a fitting response? Um, Disney basically threatened 
kind of put out a threat out there, you know, that they're going to get extremely politically active and work to change the government of this state. Um, Meanwhile, it was just reported that there's 100,000 more Republican registered voters in the state than ever. It's never we've there's never been a majority, um, even though we do win the governorship. But um, but there's uh, probably more Democratic Congress persons in the state. You know what I mean? Like, though, there's not there's more Republican. Yeah, it's a Republican state. So how if we had more Democrats registered, how how does that keep happening? I don't know. I think Miami, Palm Beach and Broward, the three biggest counties are blue. Yeah. And they have a great impact. Um, you know, anyway, that's a whole other well, thing. Well, Florida tell us what you think about the F- Reedy Creek. Florida is is not only a Republican state, it's yeah, a it strong is. Republican state, and it has been even more so um, now for twenty four or twenty five years. So Disney is is taking on very established political people and yeah. calling them out, and they're not gonna sit back and say, Well, Okay. No. Um, get us voted out of office. They're yeah. going to fight back. This is definitely a reaction to that threat. Because mm-hmm. I feel like Disney kind of, I think companies should stay out of politics, but uh, these big companies get involved because they want to put people in power that benefit their company. And I think that's a conflict of interest. And I don't think that should be allowed personally, but a lot of these companies make political donations because they want, and then once they help get somebody elected, then they're going to pass laws to help them out, to give yeah. them breaks. So Disney never really had to worry about that as much as they will now if they lose their Reedy Creek oh, status. Be, that would be devastating to them. Devastating. Yeah. Okay, so the next – so tell fact, us what I, just you think, yeah. One last thing on the Reedy Creek. Disney would not be able to function with the current business plan they have if Maybe. they lose the Reedy Creek Development District or improvement district status. They, if they have to be governed by two different counties, Osceola and Orange counties, I think that'd be a they problem. would be in big trouble because those counties, you know, like right now, for example, they're doing testing on Tron. Tron, right? Okay, now there's state level testing because it's a roller coaster, it's a ride, and Guardians of the Galaxy, and, you know. But what would happen is um, the county inspector is going to come in in a little different way, inspecting things as opposed to the Reedy Creek inspector. On the right, do right. you understand who Plus, works I'm for sure Disney? There's tax implications too. <laughs> there's got to be. Yeah. Um. Anyway, it's a mess for them. Tell us what you think about that. About Disney, like I said, losing possibly. Uh, I think it's going to happen. They're going to revoke that, and it's a very yeah. different world that we live in than 1967. Now this, this this next story is awesome. Disney. C- this is from Inside the Magic. Disney CEO Bob Chapek's possible removal from company is imminent speculation indicates, you know, like I said, they're having a bad year so far as controversy continues to surround the Walt Disney company. It's current leadership is standing on increasingly shaky ground and nobody likes Bob Chapek anyway. He's, he's, it, it just came out also that the Disney genie plus Disney has said that you can expect to get two or three rides out of that benefit, which is basically the fast pass benefit. Now, before the genie plus came out, you could use fast passes and probably use it on as many rides as you yeah. wanted to, or at least five or six, and you didn't have to pay for it. Now, and this happened to you, now you're paying $15 a person, and they're saying expect to get two or three rides at the maximum out of your money. So if you have a family of four, that's $60 you're spending. And if you're lucky, you're lucky, you'll get to use it on three rides. You got to use it on an, on one attraction, Yeah, the not in, even the, a ride. At the Indiana Jones Stunt Spectacular, which you can just wait in line for exactly. anyway. Exactly. Okay, so it continues. While the Walt Disney Company has dealt with its fair share of trials, tribulations, and controversies, the firestorm surrounding it right now regarding Florida's new bill, the Parental Rights Act, has reached an unprecedented level with the current CEO's position possibly hanging in the balance. So Disney continues to make efforts to support LGBTQ plus community um, leadership. So they've really, you know, what happened is this bill was, was, was presented to the governor to sign a few weeks ago. And Bob Chapek apparently didn't make a statement or didn't say anything. And that upset People And there's a lot of people in the LGBTQ plus community that work for Disney and it upset them and it upset um, probably more at the corporate level than anything. And they came out and they were not happy that he just ignored this and didn't say something. So now because he didn't say anything, now things are getting much more heated and people are very well, unhappy. you know, the, OK, Pr- Chapek's got a lot of problems, which we have talked about a lot. I know a lot for of you sure. guys amongst yourselves talk about them. But throughout the history of Walt Disney's company, whoever the uh, 
CEO is, has kind of taken over the reins of Walt himself and is the image for the company. And there needs to be a likability factor. There's an expectation of a connection between whoever is running Disney as the CEO and the cast members and the fans that go to all the parks and use all the stuff like Disney. Plus. And this is the first time I know Michael Eisner was, is a controversial figure, but he grew Disney and gave us MGM. And I know there's some controversies around some of the things he did, but he was on, he was on the wonderful world of Disney. And he was like, you know, Chapik is the first CEO of Disney that I, I know of that is despised by all that, you know, yeah. th- like, like it's saying here that this controversy that he's dealing with is worse than anyone. And his contract is up in 11 months. So, well, I think you know, they're going to, I don't think these, they're going to renew it. These guys, when they get blown out of the, like they, they fired, they fired Michael Eisner. Yeah. You know, when these guy, guys get fired, um, you know, they got those golden parachutes, these corporate guys, they do all right. It's not like he's going to be, uh, no, but it's the, humiliating. Know, re- it's a little humiliating for them. There's a lot of ego involved. Yeah. And nobody wants to leave a legacy of failure. Even though they get a $30 million, he just gave himself a big bonus. Even though they walk away with millions of dollars, there's still that stigma on you and on your legacy. But what you need that's, with that's not good, that nobody wants that. What, what you need, in, what, there's a couple of things you need with the CEO of Disney, okay, that Chapik doesn't have likability. Yes. He seems very nasty. I, I mean, he just seems nasty. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if he is, but he seems nasty. And you've got to have kind of at least the persona of being a dreamer and a doer. And there have not been that many people that have run the Disney parks, but all of them have been dreamers and doers who had visions that they projected for the parks, whatever it was. And this guy, all he, all Chapik, his vision is, is getting every cent from you that you, he possibly can with giving you as little as they can. Now that may be business, but at least it wasn't so obvious with the others. You understand what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like at the other parks, I mean, with the other CEOs, it was okay. They obviously it's a business. They want to make a lot of money. Disney was never cheap to get into. And if you would yeah. just for inflation, it, it was always expensive, but they spared no expense in giving you a great experience. Chapik, they don't even give you, uh, they do this thing with no straws and lids on drinks. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And things like this, you know. <laughs> things that were <laughs> you know, small on. things, and we've talked about this, so I don't want to go on too much about it, but small things that were free or certain perks that were free are now no longer free. Yeah. And there's so much planning. And then, by the way, with the Genie Plus, with getting three rides max, the article also said, if, if you get up early enough. Yeah. So you have to get up at like five o'clock in the morning. That is not a vacation. You got to get up, start planning. You got to get up at 5 a.m. like before you even travel to Disney, right? Well, if you're if you're in the park and you've had a long day the day before and you were up watching the fireworks and you didn't get to bed till 12 o'clock, you got to get up at five o'clock in the morning just so you can possibly get possibly and you may not even get fast pass options. The way this guy is running this company is not from the point of view of of um. A guest. Yeah, it's not Maybe he's friendly. never even been to the park as a guest. Yeah. He is running the park from the viewpoint of how much money can I make? Yeah. And he doesn't even consider I, companies got to make money. It's a corporation. I'm a, I, I agree with that, you know, and I've, you know, they hire people and that's the way it goes. I have nothing against that. But when you make these decisions, you have to consider the guest experience at the same time. And you have to weigh the pros and cons and say, look, we want to do this, but if we implement this, how are the guests going to feel? What problems is this going to create for them? That doesn't even seem to be a consideration for this man. It's just, well, he, I, I, I'm predicting two things. I think they possibly will lose their status of Reedy Creek uh, because I think Disney is, is creating a war now with, the, with DeSantis, and I don't think it's a war they're poss- necessarily going to win right now, maybe down the road, but not right now with the current government in place. And um, Bob Chapik, I think, will not get his contract renewed because nobody likes him now. Here's the question to you guys. Do you think Bob Iger will come back or will they promote somebody within or bring in well, somebody okay. totally they're, different? I don't think they're going to lose the Reedy Creek status because there's a board of directors of which Bob Chapik and other responsible people are on. And the board of directors believe- Bob Chapik. Or not Bob Chapik. Um, uh, who was the last- Bob Iger. Yeah, Bob Iger. I meant Bob Iger. Iger and other grownups are on it, mm-hmm. and they're not going to let them lose that Reedy Creek status because 
Um, they know how valuable it is. Maybe they'll back things. So Bob Iger, up a bit. Bob Iger will, if he's not already, will mm-hmm. be on the phone to the governor of Florida and state legislators and and take care of this and not let that happen. But I'll, I'll tell you, if it results in Bob Chapek getting fired, I think that's a good thing. I think he sucks. I think yeah, that he's not doing a good. Job. I think that the Disney experience is nothing but frustrating with this new system. I mean, you already have the Disney rage on a before all this and now they've got they've got they've got everyone set up where they're going to be pissed off because they can't ride anything with this new uh, plus system and the reservation system they've made going to disney not a fantasy pleasurable ex- see see disney world right there's Dis- disney lands all over the place this is disney world and disney world is supposed to be like west world and that when you go there you're in this magical place and anything is possible, and everything is happy, and there's no stress. And what they've done with the reservation system and the Disney Plus is created it, the, the most stressful situation you can put people in mm. at, at a very high dollar and amount. And then they're adding in this political <laughs> you know? component, which I think we can all agree the country's pretty divided politically. I mean, I think it's pretty evenly divided and when you get politically involved, you run the risk of alienating half, half. of your exactly. customer base. That's why I don't think it's a smart idea. Exactly. And to come out and openly now, companies like Dis, Florida companies like Publix, Disney, they donate to politicians all the time. But to come out and like openly, but they donate to both parties. They right. They usually donate to both parties. Yeah. But to come out and openly say we're going to fight against you, fight against this to me is a bit of a threat and they're creating a problem that they probably don't want to create. And maybe you're right. Maybe um, other people are going to get involved because this zoom leak of this meeting uh, was not good for Disney overall. Um, And you can watch that. I don't want to get into that too much, but we'll see what happens. Tell us what you guys think. What I'd like to know, because you go to the parks, I haven't been in a while and, but I've seen video uh, live streams and stuff. The parks are super crowded more. I mean, you know, more crowded than ever all the time. Why are people still going with all the problems Disney is having? And we've talked about this before. People still go and that's all they care. But the only way they're going to change is if park attendance is way down. And then they're going to look at themselves and say, clearly we're doing something wrong. But as long as people are spending the money and going, they're going to keep doing what they're doing because they're just, they're making money. They're not going to care. I mean, you know, as long as people are spending the money. I just want to know, now I did do another poll, if you look about, have people cancel trips, but tell us about your Disney plans. Are you canceling? Are you, don't care? Is it still wonderful and you're still going to go? Okay, so on the good news, we have some good news about Disney. Disney guests will be able to get up in close to characters starting in April, and this is in USA Today. For the first time in forever, it seems, Walt Disney World and Disneyland guests will be able to get close to Mickey, Minnie, and other Disney characters for photos, autographs, and hugs. Traditional character interactions are returning as early as April 18th to both parks, Disney Cruise Line and Disney's Aulani Resort in Hawaii, Disney Parks announced today. While not all locations will be available immediately, we anticipate reopening in phases throughout the spring and early summer. Disney live entertainment. So, you know, they've been doing social distancing for years where you had to wave at the character from far away. So now they're bringing back the in-person and you can go up and hug Elsa and Anna and Mickey and Minnie, which I think is great for the kids. Because that's the fun of meeting it. Who wants to wave at a character from 10 feet away? Yeah, it's a little weird. It's okay, but it's It's not the same as having Mickey hug you and getting a picture up close. So that's exciting. Yeah, I I do wish though- you know, characters coming back, that's great. I wish they would have more of the not-so-common characters. Like, like uh, Justin, Justin Scard was at the Magic Kingdom here in Florida, and he just showed up, and who was there? Robin Hood? And Little John. And Little John. I've, met, I've never seen Robin Hood and Little John. That was John. amazing. I mean, that's that crazy. is right out of our childhood. Yeah. I remember having the album books. If you guys are young, you don't know, but we used to have records. And they Disney would sell a big record um, with a with a booklet and it would tell the story and I had a bunch I had the Jungle Book I had the uh, Robin Hood which was my favorite and the characters Robin Hood um, who's like a fox and they're animals and and um, then you had Baloo from the Jungle Book yeah. they would walk around and sometimes they bring out those old 
rare characters, which is yeah, they so should do that much more. fun for people our age, especially. One, one time I was, uh, this was before Galaxy's Edge opened, Yeah. but I was in the Star Wars launch bay and they had the Jawas there, which was really that cool. That is really cool. That was really cool. One time I saw somebody was there and they had Phineas and Ferb. Oh, which yeah. Which is amazing. That's a great yeah, I've show. I've seen Phineas and Ferb. Our there. daughter was excited about that because we used to watch yeah. that when Emily was a kid. But anyway, guys, tell us what you think. We always love to hear your opinions. Take the polls on the channel in the community section. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you soon. <laughs>